Each year, thousands of cats are diagnosed with diabetes mellitus. If your cat was recently diagnosed, you may be feeling upset and confused. You're not alone. Many people who own diabetic cats have experienced these same feelings. These programs are designed to help you understand diabetes and how it will affect you and your cat. Well, Zach, a uh, good-sized male cat, all of a sudden he started losing weight. And I thought, oh great, diet cat food's finally starting to kick in. <laughs> but, you know, it just got to the point where he was losing more and more weight, where we were looking at him and thinking, this is just not normal. His name is Wickers. I noticed that he had become very thin. He was this like incredibly shrinking cat. Just week by week, he seemed to get thinner and thinner and thinner. She started, something was going on, and I knew something wasn't right, and then she had this one night where um, uh, she couldn't, her hind legs weren't moving. When I started to notice that he had lost a great deal of weight, he wasn't looking good, um, his fur seemed odd, and he was drinking a lot of water. She started drinking a little more, which was very unusual for her. She was pretty much just camping out by the water bowl. I was worried, mainly just because she's never had any medical problems at all. She's just always been a healthy cat. So what brings Fitzy in to see us today? Well, she's been drinking a little bit more than normal. Um, and the, the litter box has been a little wetter than normal. How's Fitzy's appetite been? Appetite seems to be good, um, maybe eating a little bit more than normal, okay. but she looks to me like she might have lost a little bit of oh, weight. Really? Oh, really? Okay. Well, Fitzy, let's take a look at you. Well, one of the things that I, I'm concerned about with Fitzy's increased thirst, your increased urination, the wetter litter box, um, maybe even an increased appetite, and a little bit of weight loss. I'm concerned that Fitzy might have diabetes. How could she get diabetes? Well, we don't know why cats get diabetes in most instances. We do know that cats that are overweight are at increased risk. Diabetes is a hormonal problem. You know, normally when cats eat their food, food is digested and absorbed from the intestines into the bloodstream. In the liver, nutrients from the food are used to manufacture glucose. Glucose is then carried to all the cells in the body to be used for energy. But before glucose can be converted into energy, it has to be transported inside the cells with the help of insulin. And that's where diabetes comes into play. In healthy cats, insulin binds to receptors on the surface of the cells, opening channels that allow glucose to pass inside the cell. But in diabetic cats, there's a problem with glucose transport. Either insulin or its receptors are in short supply, or the receptors become unresponsive to insulin. So even though Fitzy eats, her cells aren't able to absorb the glucose from the food. Is that why she's hungry all the time? Yes, even though she's eating a lot, her cells are starved for energy. But no matter how much she eats, without insulin, she just can't absorb enough glucose. Instead, her body has resorted to burning fat and muscle, causing all that weight loss you noticed. And why is she drinking more and urinating more? Well, this glucose is in her bloodstream and it's at high levels. In the kidneys, glucose begins to spill over into the urine where it acts sort of like a sponge, drawing in excess water and increasing the volume of urine. It's the reason for the litter box being so wet. And she drinks more water to try to make up for that fluid loss. She also seems to be sleeping more than usual. Why is that? That's because her cells are not getting the energy they require, so she feels very tired. But we're going to want to do some blood tests just to make sure that, uh, that we have the diagnosis. First, we're going to draw a blood sample. We'll do a complete blood cell count and a blood chemistry to try to make sure that Fitzy doesn't have an infection. Many times cats with diabetes will have a problem with infection. And the serum chemistry will help give us a lot of information about Fitzy, such as how well her organs are functioning and if her blood glucose concentration is elevated, as it would be if she has diabetes. Now, some cats, when they come into the clinic, just as Fitzy, and I can tell by her increased heart rate, is pretty excited. 
Uh, and cats then that are excited, their blood sugar levels can shoot really high for a short period of time. So to try to make sure that if we find a high sugar that it's not just due to stress, we're also going to do a test called the serum fructosamine test. That gives us a little bit better idea as to what Fitzy's sugar has been like in the past, and that'll let us know whether or not the sugar is high because of diabetes or stress. We'll also want to check a urine sample. First, we'll look for glucose in her urine, but we also want to make sure she doesn't have a urinary tract infection. Many cats with diabetes can have problems with a urinary tract infection. So we'll be doing a bacterial culture. We're also going to do something called a sensitivity test, so that if we find bacteria, we'll know which antibiotics would be best to treat the infection. All right, now depending on the results that we get from these preliminary tests, there may be some other things that we'll want to look at just to make sure we know the full extent of uh, what's happening with Fitzy before we start a treatment plan. So we'll get these test results back. It may take a few days for that to happen. And as soon as we get them back, I'll give you a call. Great. Great, thank you. Thank you. He had lost about 25% of his body weight by the time I got him into the vet. And you know, they rushed the blood work and the next day they told me he had diabetes. I thought the diagnosis was gonna be that he had cancer that he had some terminal disease, and I was preparing myself for that kind of result because he had lost so much weight. And, uh, and then that's when they told me that he was diabetic, which was actually a relief because I knew that, that he could, that's a, a disease he could live with. I was completely bewildered and also very upset because I wasn't sure how much it paralleled human diabetes. Who would know? and how, what this would mean for longevity and what it would mean on our part to care for him. All right, we have Fitzy's test results back and they do confirm that she has diabetes mellitus. Now, is this a serious problem? Well, it's a serious problem, but the good news is it's very treatable. Two basic ways that we treat diabetic cats, one is with pills called oral hypoglycemics. The second is with insulin injections. Now the, the pills stimulate insulin release from the pancreas uh, and the insulin injections actually just provide an external source of insulin. Um, a lot of people think that giving pills to cats would be the best way to, to treat. They, they sort of don't like the idea of injections. But in fact, many cats don't respond to pills uh, and many cats don't like to be given pills either. Well, when I first heard about it and the vet told me that I would have to give him daily injections, I was a little intimidated. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big medical person and uh, the thought of having to give him shots was, it was scary, it was a little scary. And the concern I had was how to give him insulin because obviously, who does this? And it always makes you squeamish because I just felt I would be hurting him two days of doing it and I was fine. I'd like to see Fitzy on insulin injections immediately because she's lost so much weight and I'm concerned that she could develop a condition called ketoacidosis. What's that? Ketoacidosis is a potentially serious complication. Normally the main source of fuel in the body is glucose. In diabetes, the body can become so deprived of glucose that it turns to fat stores for fuel. Fatty acids are broken down into ketones for use as an alternative source of energy. But if too many ketones accumulate in the bloodstream, they alter the pH and chemistry of the blood, leading to poor appetite, vomiting, dehydration. Left untreated, ketoacidosis can rapidly progress to deadly complications. Getting Fitzy's diabetes under control as soon as possible will minimize her risk of developing ketoacidosis as well as other potential complications of uncontrolled diabetes. In fact, the majority of diabetic cats do end up on insulin therapy. I had a relative who developed diabetes and lost his eyesight. Mm. Is this something that I need to worry about with Fitzy? Because I'm not sure if I really want to put her through all this. That's a really very, very good question. The good news is that many of the complications, the serious complications that human diabetics can experience, such as vision problems and kidney problems and circulatory disturbances, we really don't see in cats. Uh, so uh, the chances are very, very good uh, that if you decide to treat Fitzy, that she's gonna have a really good quality life. Good. I think I've definitely gotten closer with her and have really sort of tuned in on what her normal behaviors are. He's been this way for three years and continues to 
you know, I guess he's a strong little fella because uh, this hasn't taken him down. He sees the needle. You know, he sees the syringe and he doesn't run away. I mean, if I got out the cat carrier, he'd see that and he'd be under the bed, you know. So, I mean, he sees it and knows what it is. And it doesn't scare him, doesn't bother him at all. And oddly enough, she knows where the needles are. And when I feed her in the morning, she won't really leave the kitchen until we've done the insulin. And as soon as we started the insulin, she stopped drinking as much. She was much more active, just really seemed to feel better. He rebounded so remarkably that one would not know that he had the disease. I mean, he really is living with the disease and living well. Your veterinarian will select an insulin type, dose, and injection interval that will serve as a starting point for your cat's therapy. There are several types of insulin available for cats. They vary by potency, duration of action, and other factors. This first phase of insulin therapy is the regulation phase. Regulation means finding the proper insulin type, dose, and injection interval to keep your cat's blood glucose between 100 and 300 throughout the day and night. When blood glucose stays within this range, the symptoms of diabetes disappear. The first dose of insulin is typically given during the office visit, where you will be shown how to give your cat his insulin injections. Most cats are then sent home on a low dose of insulin for about a week to allow you and your cat time to adjust to the new treatment routine. And I would say the very first time I did it on my own, I was, I was definitely nervous. But the syringes, the needles are so tiny. They're so little. And I so said after I did it to him twice, you know, after two days and saw how easy it was, right now it's like it's just no big deal at all. After about a week, your veterinarian may ask you to come back for a follow-up visit. This often involves a short hospital stay to get a blood glucose curve. In this test, your cat is given insulin and his blood glucose level is measured every two hours. This test will show how long it takes your cat's glucose to reach its lowest point of the day and to determine the highest and lowest glucose levels of the day. Each cat processes insulin differently. The glucose curve helps your veterinarian tailor the insulin therapy to achieve optimal blood glucose levels throughout the day and night. If adjustments are made to the insulin, you may be asked to come back for additional blood glucose curves in the coming weeks. Your veterinarian will continue to adjust the insulin until satisfied that your cat's diabetes is properly regulated. How long this process will take varies from cat to cat and unfortunately is unpredictable. Although the regulation phase can be a time of frustration and expense, keep in mind that finding the appropriate insulin therapy will prevent many complications for your cat down the road. Between checkups, it's helpful for you to keep a daily log of your cat's appetite, energy level, thirst, and frequency of urination. This information helps your veterinarian to fine-tune the insulin therapy. When your cat's diabetes is well controlled, you should notice his appetite normalize, his thirst and urination habits return to normal, and his energy level improve. Be patient. These improvements can take time. We were just trying to find the right dosage of insulin for her, and it took a little while to like get it down. Um, and I was just amazed that that amount of insulin would do anything to any living creature, but apparently it does. When your veterinarian is satisfied that your cat is on the appropriate insulin therapy, your cat enters what's known as the maintenance phase. During maintenance, the insulin type, dose, and injection interval don't change, and your cat has the appearance and behavior of a normal cat. In the maintenance phase, your cat will need to see your veterinarian approximately every three to six months to ensure that his insulin needs have not changed. Your veterinarian may wish to perform a blood test known as a serum fructosamine. This test provides a snapshot of your cat's diabetic control over the previous two-week period. If the fructosamine level is normal and your cat is doing well, he will continue in the maintenance phase and the insulin therapy will be the same. If the fructosamine level is elevated, your veterinarian may wish to adjust the insulin therapy. 
Between veterinary visits, it's very important that you continue to monitor your cat closely at home for signs of trouble. Any drop in appetite, sudden weight loss, increase in thirst and urination, or decrease in energy level require an immediate recheck with your veterinarian. Keep your cat's insulin in the refrigerator. Sometimes insulin settles along the bottom of the bottle, forming a layer of white crystals. These crystals must be re-suspended before drawing up the insulin dose. Roll the bottle back and forth between the palms of your hands until all the crystals disappear. Never shake the bottle, however, as this may create foam, making it hard to draw up an accurate dose. Disinfect the top of the bottle with alcohol using a cotton ball. Allow the alcohol to air dry while you remove the protective caps from the needle. To maintain sterility, do not allow anything to come into contact with the needle before giving the injection. Invert the bottle and insert the needle into the rubber top. Pull back the plunger and draw the desired amount of insulin into the syringe. If you withdraw too much, simply inject some of the insulin back into the bottle. Avoid air bubbles in the barrel of the syringe. Even small bubbles will affect the accuracy of your dosage. If you see any bubbles, gently tap the side of the syringe to drive them to the top and inject them back into the bottle. Confirm that you have the proper amount of insulin in the syringe. Remember, insulin is extremely potent, so you must give the exact amount of insulin prescribed to your cat. It's a good idea to feed your cat before giving the injection. This serves two purposes. Associating the injection with feeding makes your cat more cooperative. And if your cat eats first, he is less likely to experience hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar. There are many ways to restrain your cat for an insulin injection. You can use a tabletop, the corner of the room, or you can work with your cat in your lap. With practice, you can usually give injections on your own, but when you're first starting out, you may find it easier to have a helper. If you've never done anything like that before, I would say having somebody near you maybe who has so that you can feel a little more confident in it the first few times. The first few times I had somebody with me every time, which was really great. Have your helper place your cat on the table with his head facing forward. Have them grasp each front limb at the elbows and pull the cat close to their body. Gently pinch the skin and pull upward to create a skin tent. Insert the needle down into the tent. Avoid sticking the needle across the skin tent, as it can inadvertently go in one side and out the other. Push the needle all the way up to the hub. This will get the insulin into the pocket just beneath the skin, where it will be absorbed properly. Pull back on the plunger and look for blood in the syringe. Blood indicates that a blood vessel has been penetrated. This is not serious. Withdraw the needle and try again in another location. If you don't see any blood, press the plunger and give the insulin. Needles and syringes are not reusable. However, medical waste must never be thrown into your regular garbage. Collect them in a container like a coffee can and take them to your veterinarian for safe disposal.